Hi, it's Deacon Bill. I'm doing another Deacon Bill's Diary. I've got a new microphone, so I think the sound should be much better on this one. So you see me tonight invested like I would be for adoration. And since it's Pentecost, I actually have my flames of the Holy Spirit on, read for Pentecost Sunday. So I want to talk a little bit about adoration. So what is adoration? Fundamentally, what we do, we take a host from the montrance, I'm sorry, from the tabernacle. We put it in the montrance. Here you can see there's no consecrated host now. Then we'll put this up on the altar, and then we can have quiet prayer time just with us and Jesus. So if you think of adoration, think of spending time with a close friend, or maybe snuggling with your spouse on the couch watching a movie, or laying in bed with your kids reading a bedtime story. It's a kind of intimate, just fun time, close time, just enjoying each other's company. And that's really what adoration is. It's your time with the risen Savior. And remember, Christianity, this isn't a set of rules or practices you have to follow. This is about a relationship, about Jesus, the Christ, who lived. He's a person, he lived, and he calls us to love. He gives us love. Christianity is about Christ. So if we think about the Holy Trinity, we start with God. God just transcend, transcends everything we know. God created the universe. He was here at the beginning. He'll be here at the end. We will never experience God until we reach our eternal life if we, in heaven. But he sent us, so this God who created this whole universe sent us his son Jesus to live on earth. He lived, we can read about him in the gospels. True God, true man, he was alive just like we're alive. But then when he died, he ascended up into heaven. That's what we just celebrated on Ascension Thursday. And think about John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should have eternal life. That's a great gift. That's great love. So we go from God to Jesus, to Jesus' truly presence in the Montrance. And then we receive Eucharist on Sunday, Jesus into our hearts. God to Jesus to the monstrance into our hearts. It's an amazing, the bread of life we can actually carry with us. So if we focus again on adoration, it's really a time for just praise. It's not a prayer of utility. Help me on this exam. Please pray that I get a new job. Please pray that, you know, my surgery goes well. Those are all wonderful prayers. We're asking God for something. Adoration is just pure praise. Our goal is to praise and just contemplate God. God speaks in that silence. It's that pure contemplation. It's just the heart of your experience, just spontaneous joy. So I'll tell you about my first adoration. I think if you're here for the first communions, I, I talked about I came into the church at 35, so it was much larger than the other, other kids in the row. But again, I came in as a convert through RCIA. So I went to my first adoration in Georgia. We have a very small chapel. Um, it was actually down the hall from where the Sunday school rooms were. And it was very quiet. I think it was about 11 o'clock at night, which if you know me now is, is way past my normal bedtime. But the kids were asleep and Ellen was watching them. So Debbie and I went down. And it was just so quiet and so peaceful. The deacon there had a small tape playing just some quiet music, you know, candles around the altar like we, we have here. Just a beautiful time of complete silence, complete quiet. And I'll always remember that. And over the years I've done adoration, um, we've had perpetual adoration, adoration during Lent, and we've gone at two or three in the morning, four or five in the morning. But it's just a wonderful time to just, just be with God. Sometimes it's so quiet and so peaceful, you, you do tend to almost nod off. But, but that's that peace you get from the adoration. Just me and God. It just restores my spirits. So you get into, so how do you do adoration? We enter the church, it's 100% silent, like the church is now. I'm the only one here. So it's very quiet, very peaceful. You bow, or if you can, genuflect, actually get down on both knees to, in respect 
for Jesus in, in the monstrance. Then you can sit down in the pew. And for me, it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes just to get calmed down. You know, maybe I'm in traffic or thinking about, you know, various things at work or the kids or something going on. But it takes me about the time to just get down, breathe, relax. Then you can listen. Just listen. Sometimes I bring a journal. A lot of times I like to bring a journal. Or I'll bring something to read. Maybe it's my evening prayer or some scripture or a spiritual book I'm reading. But it's really a time just to receive God and just contemplate God. And if it helps you to read or pray, then that's, that's fine. So again, I t- it takes about an hour. When you're done, just quietly genuflect and, or bow and, and leave. You don't have to come for the full hour, but come as you can. The one thing I would note, um, adoration is great for kids. You know, they may squirm a little bit, but if they bring, you know, a coloring book or, you know, something to kind of keep them focused, then it's a great time for them to learn to just be there with God and feel his presence. It's amazing what kids can pick up that as adults we sort of just filter out. Debbie actually set up a children's adoration in... Again, we were back in Georgia, and we had the kids come in and sit for, they wouldn't do the whole hour, but maybe about 20 or 30 minutes, and just enjoy the presence. Get, get a few, maybe a few prayers at the end, but it was just a wonderful time for them to be there, you know, with the monstrance. So as I talk about adoration, one thing I've noticed over the years, looking through the places we've lived, the parishes with active adoration tend to be thriving. We all want to get to heaven, we all want to be part of a dynamic parish, and adoration is always at the heart of that. So for St. Agnes, we have our website is set up. If you look under worship, there's a short five-minute video about adoration. It was done several years ago. You'll recognize some of the people in the video, but it's a very beautiful testimony from some different age folks, men and women, just sharing what adoration has done for them in their lives. And again, if you never come to adoration, watch that five-minute video. It's very meaningful, very powerful. But I would like to invite you to adoration. We need committed adorers. So I'd encourage everyone to come at least three times. You come once and don't like it, okay, that's, you know, who knows, maybe it's a bad day, bad timing, you know, life happens. But if you come three times, you should feel it in your heart. And if it's not touching you, it's not touching you. But I believe it will. And each time you come, if you can stay a little bit longer, I would say a minimum of 20 minutes, 30 minutes is great, an hour is fantastic. And some people will spend hours. Sometimes, you know, in God there is no time. And sometime in that adoration, you do get lost in time. But that's okay. Because we're trying to move from our human realm into that divine realm where there's two touch through Jesus. So again, the 20 minutes I suggest is primarily about 10 minutes to settle down, 10 minutes to listen to God. And as you feel rewarded, share your stories with our heart team. It's H-E-A-R-T. And you can find information on our website, or if you'd like to sign up as an adore, go to the St. Agnes website or call Marty. We would like people to commit And if you can't commit every week, that's okay. Maybe you can come once a month, twice a month, or maybe you have a group you're with, a a prayer group, or a, even if it's a neighborhood group, you get together, study the Bible, or just kibitz, enjoy each other's company. If you take turns, it's easy to knock knock it off. We only, it's, we go from after morning mass at about eight o'clock till seven o'clock at night. So it's about an 11 hour period. So if we can get 30 or 50, or even 100 people, we could easily cover the adoration hours. And again, we would encourage more people to come. It's a beautiful gift for you. It's a beautiful gift for God. And finally, at night, um, we have benediction at 650. If you've never been to a benediction, it, it's really something to see. It's, as I say, it's Catholic. With, it's capital C Catholic. We have a Latin opening hymn. We have the incense out, 
And you get the blessing from the monstrance. That's a special feeling if you've never had it. Seeing that monstrance held up and Jesus just blessing you. Now as a deacon, I actually get to do the blessing. And <laughs> it's just been an amazing experience for me going from, you know, just receiving God to actually being able to, to share and give that blessing to you. So I look forward to you coming soon and seeing you at adoration and certainly at benediction if you can make it. So may God bless you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.